So, Miss Selspex, tell me what's on your mind. Well, the truth is, I have a lot of complicated feelings about the episode of Mending Fences, which I've found difficult to voice considering how much everyone else seems to like it. I see. Is there a particular story element or theme that stood out for you? Well, I know how much everyone likes Moondancer for being like Twilight if she had never moved to Ponyville, and I agree that's very clever. And while I perfectly understand the eventual intent of why Twilight does what she does, she found friends and wants to share how much she feels that's made a positive influence in her life. But in the episode, it comes off more like she's trying to prove that she really is the princess of friendship, but that's not really the point. What really got to me was the way she was pressuring Moondancer to accept her even after she said no multiple times. It was like she felt Moondancer must be miserable being on her own, and she needed to save her from her loneliness, despite Twilight was like that for years. Interesting. And you worry about what kind of message this could send to others? Simply assuming that because someone prefers to spend time alone, then they must be miserable and must need help to draw them out of their solitude? Basically, but I admit it's complicated. On the one hand, I do admit that there are some people that are just not good at socializing, but do want to be included. It's good to invite people who you think look lonely, but Twilight just kept harping on Moondancer despite her protests and eventually setting up that party to surprise her. And to me, that looked terrifying. See, while I admit I've had moments where I wish someone would invite me to talk or something, I am also someone who can get very stressed out in social situations. A lot of times they're just not fun for me. I very much value my time alone and often find I'm more productive that way. I can't even do a Skype call that lasts too long. I've had a few situations in which people have pressured me to socialize or enjoy myself in situations where I was very uncomfortable and people were resisting my protests. I just feel there's not a whole lot of examples in media that show that being by yourself is not a curse. I can name a few that have done a good job. Winnie the Pooh is one. But in terms of the show, I know the most common rebuttal to this would be, but if they did that in the show, it'd be too much like Cranky Doodle Donkey. And yes, while it is similar, that episode still showed he was only happy after Pinkie Pie interfered and frankly tormented him in the meantime. I think quite a few of us can agree that while Pinkie Pie had some admirable motives in mind, a few of her methods simply went too far with Cranky Doodle. It was really just by sheer coincidence that Pinky happened to discover the one thing that could draw Cranky out of his solitary lifestyle. So, I can see a few similarities in what Twilight was doing with Moondancer. But, do you suppose it made a difference that Moondancer actually did make a genuine effort to socialize long ago? And it was only because Twilight wasn't around that Moondancer had decided never to try again? Do you think that changes Twilight's motives and perhaps even gives more of a case for Moondancer to break out of her shell compared to Cranky Doodle? It's true that Moondancer did try to socialize earlier, but Twilight didn't know that. She didn't even remember any of them until Spike said something, and that just gave the impression that Twilight's first instinct was acting out of blatant self-interest to fix how her old friends thought about her. And it reminded me of people who didn't care about what I thought. And even with the reveal at the end, I was still conflicted because it vindicated Twilight's blind assumption. But I could also understand Moondancer's humiliation. I know what it is to try and fail to connect with someone and not want to try again. And yes, being by myself sometimes can get lonely. But it doesn't mean I want people to pester me constantly or kidnap me and take me to a club or something. That's not fun for me. It's fun for me to collect my thoughts and write them down. Now, it is possible that I wanted a message that coincided with what I wanted it to tell me. That it's fine just being on my own instead of constantly prodding me that I must still be unhappy. And maybe that's an issue with me as an analyst, being able to separate the episode's message from my personal opinion on the matter. But isn't using your personal background to find meeting exactly what an analyst does, what an audience does? Indeed. One cannot deny that any highly introverted individual needs a calm and quiet environment in order to feel comfortable and recharge their energies. And any highly extroverted individual trying to help that introvert break out of their comfort zone and take part in social gatherings can often misunderstand why said introvert seems so hesitant, or even resistant. An introvert has to spend energy in order to be social, whereas an extrovert gains energy by being social. So, Cellspecs, your fears and hesitations in regards to the episode do have merit. 
Simply assuming that anyone who spends a lot of time alone must be miserable would be doing them a disservice, and I imagine Twilight's efforts in the early part of the episode were somewhat misguided, whether or not she knew about Moondancer's earlier attempts to be social. We do know that Twilight saw a great deal of her past self in Moondancer. Thinking back to how much she had learned since then, remembering how much even she resisted friendship back before the main six existed, from Twilight's perspective, she could either find a way to help Moondancer learn even a fraction of what Twilight had learned about friendship, or she could have decided that Moondancer already knew what was best for herself and not to interfere with it. After all, one cannot change how someone else thinks or acts. They have to decide that for themselves. I have to agree that Twilight couldn't have known the outcome of her efforts with Moondancer. It could have been that Moondancer would have rejected Twilight outright, and nothing good would have come from it. But if there was a chance that Moondancer could feel even a bit more positively about friendship just as Twilight had, do you believe it was right for Twilight to try and share that joy? Even if that meant she was doing things that made Moondancer upset for a time? In the end, I can't begrudge Twilight for at least trying. I do think maybe just from the way the episode was written, it came off more like Twilight was worried about her title than about Moondancer, but I think at least from the writer's intent that she was reacting from a good place, seeing herself in Moondancer and at least wanting her to try a hand at friendship before rejecting it. Like I said, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong about at least trying to help someone if you think your help can make them happy, but I also think some people can be a bit self-involved in thinking they know what's better for someone else. An extreme example of that is like in Once Upon a Time when Regina's mother says that she wants what's best for her daughter by killing her boyfriend so she'll marry the king whom she's never met because she genuinely believes that status and money is the key to happiness rather than love. Man, I've been making a lot of Once Upon a Time references lately. But again, that's an extreme example and not even close to being the majority of the case. I think most people do want to know what others want and genuinely want to help. And I know that an introvert isn't a hermit, they have to go out and interact with people sometimes. After all, you never get to know your good close friends if you never go out and talk to anyone, but it can still be hard to take that step. It's a tough call on whether or not you should push someone into uncomfortable situations, because you never know if they're gonna thrive. I'm sure that's a problem a lot of parents have, whether it's better to let your kids find their own path, or if you need to push them a little. And I admit, I'm someone who has been very reluctant to be pushed. I have always preferred to act on my own decisions than following someone else's instance that this is the way I should be doing things, or this will make me happy, even if my decision ended up being wrong. And I also know living that way, I've had to live with the consequences. But back to the show. I guess I can't help but wish for an episode that really displays how tough it is sometimes for an introvert to be around people for a while, and how they're still happy doing their own thing. Though I admit that Twilight herself still technically is one. She likes to take an entire weekend to herself to organize her books and such, and prefers small gatherings to large crowds. Or maybe I'm thinking of mentally advanced Twilight. Hmm. Maybe if you were to take that frame of thinking and apply it to a different episode, you might actually have the example you're looking for. Say, Scaremaster with Fluttershy? Instead of seeing that episode as a character being afraid of what's scary on Nightmare Night, imagine that same set of circumstances surrounding an individual's attempts to socialize when every one of their instincts just wants to keep with familiar surroundings. In the end, that story showed us that it was okay to go back to one's comfort zone, even after discovering something new about yourself that your friends truly admired. The point was, Fluttershy stepped out of her comfort zone to try something she truly dreaded. And in the end, it wasn't her fears that stopped her, but rather feeling comfortable with what she had become. She was happy that she had discovered something new, but her friends ultimately respected her decision to go back to what she was comfortable with. Would that be a good example of what you're looking for in MLP sales specs? Actually, you're totally right. I did love that episode. It's one of my favorites of season five. Initially, it was for how visually vibrant it was and the message how you and your friends can have completely different interests and not all like the same things. I think that's a very important message, especially in this age, but you're right. 
Fluttershy tries something uncomfortable and social, but finds she's more comfortable being with herself. But because she at least tried, she's more confident in that decision. I know that I've tried some things that haven't worked, but because I experienced them once, I at least know for a fact that those scenes aren't for me. I guess I didn't even realize how much I connected to that episode. I guess even now it's hard for me to go out and try certain things. But if I had initially asked you to be part of our Bronies React, something I admit I was terrified to do, not knowing if you would reject the invitation or just ignore me, which happened to plenty of other bronies I invited. But if I hadn't tried, we wouldn't have ever gotten to know each other. Indeed, Cellspex. I imagine that you're actually feeling a bit more willing to step outside of your comfort zone because you decided some of your fears weren't worth putting aside the potential gains. It's something I myself am continuing to learn even today. I imagine episodes like Amending Fences as well as Scaremaster actually do present some differing perspectives as well as differing solutions. But I can admire the end result in both cases, and I sincerely hope that others will as well. Shall we continue on this next week? Absolutely. Thanks, Doc. I still don't love that episode, but that's okay. It's just not for me. But I can understand how it still resonates with others. That's the good thing about MLP, that it has such a large number of stories for many different people to relate to. Glad to hear it, Cellspex. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on even more episodes in the future. Take care. It's good to be helping.